Hello everybody and welcome to my video on using a Spirit Flavorless controller with your Grabner receiver and radio. In this case I'm using an MZ32 from Grabner and uh, I'll be connecting up 7D and then also I'm going to do hopefully set up the uh, integration and telemetry part as well so you can see how that works. So how do we go about all of this? Well you need to first tell the flyboard controller, the Spirit, to talk some D. And to do that, we will hook it up to our PC and make a, a quick change and save it so that we can go to that step. Before we get there though, we have a couple of other wires here that we need to be able to talk to our receiver and make sure all of this happen. If you just want the some D to work, you just need a little mail to mail connector, one that comes in the package with the the spirit and that's it you're good to go and you can do it if you want the integration and the telemetry to work as well then you're going to need another cable and you're going to have to modify one of these mail to mail connectors to have two wires and then the one end that, go, end that goes into the telemetry port on the Kraupner it has to have the two outer sides connected and the other side that plugs into the sys port on on the fly wireless needs to have the brown and red and you just remove the orange out of the top one. So very simple cable to make and we'll talk about that when we get there. Okay, so step one, as I said, we need to connect our spirit to our laptop and then make a quick change. So how do we do that? We take our USB cable that came with the spirit and that nice little package we got connect that with the orange wire up facing upwards on the spirit 2. If you're using a spirit 1 then the orange wire will point inwards towards the graphic and the brown towards the back end of the of the fly wireless controller. Anyway that's not all you need to do right now. Um, as you can see we're not powered up yet um, since we're only getting 3.3 volts into that connector we need to supply our own power and to do that we just have a little two cell lipo here that i have a little connector on and i'm going to plug that into any one of these connectors other than the two up by side ones very important you don't want to connect power to the outside the one that says elevator pitch aileron that will um, destroy the unit you don't want to do that and uh, the same with the sys port then apply power to that that will also destroy it all right now that we have power to the flybar controller, to the Spirit, we're gonna go to our laptop. All right, we're gonna start up our Spirit settings app. Um, I have a video that shows how to install Spirit on a Mac. Um, there is a little gotcha, as you can see, I'm running Catalina. You wanna make sure you install the correct drivers with it. I'll leave a link in the description to, to show you how to do that. Anyway, there we go. So uh, already have a mess of wires and I haven't even started. So here we go. We plugged in the USB into the sys. We're talking to the flybar and we're going to go and say run the wizard. And when we go to this page, you'll see that um, we have the option for some D here. So I'm going to select that, go to the next page. It shows you how to hook up. I'll do that in the video. Um, here you can choose the orientation of the spirit and of your swash plate. You can set that up. I'm going to skip all of this because you can get to this back later again. The important part here though, however, is set up your servos. Make sure you have the right thing in here. Probably not as important for the cyclic because those are typically uh, 15, 20 microseconds anyway. But for the router, in my case, it is a 760 microsecond. So you, you really want to make sure that you configure this properly so you don't damage your servos. All right, we'll do that. I'll connect to it. And as soon as I do, you'll see that it says, oh, you have changed the setting and that setting being some D. And uh, for that to take effect, you need to power off and power back on. So we're gonna go, all right, we're gonna take power off. Now I'm not gonna power it back on right away. And why not? Well, to be honest, because, well, we wanna set up a receiver, right? I wanna be able to talk to it when we power it back on again so we don't have to 
And so how do I go about that? Well, we're gonna use that same little power cable I just disconnected from the Spirit. We're gonna shove it into any of the servos ports on my receiver. And you'll see it's blinking. Then I'm gonna go and grab my radio. Now, I think it's important when you do this that you set up a brand new model. But if you start with a brand new model, then uh, you don't have all of those things that get in the way and maybe mess up your setting. So I'm just gonna create a new model. We're gonna call it Spirit. I'm gonna say it is an helicopter, one servo, all that stuff, all the good stuff. Note that, why is this focus doing what it's doing? I don't know. Anyway, you wanna make sure that uh, the limit part here is disabled. You really don't wanna do that when you set up. You can come back and configure it again if you know what you're doing, um, but I'm gonna go into unlimit, all right. And that should create the model for us. So we're good to go as soon as it's loaded here. All right, there we go. Couple of things I quickly wanna do before we go and bind the receiver. We're gonna go into the control set menu and we're gonna go and assign a couple of switches quickly. For channel five, we'll just pick a switch. And this is so that when you do the setup and configuration on your fly wireless on the Spirit that you can actually see the outputs and make sure they're working correctly. And the same for channel seven, if you wanna use that. Uh, I'm gonna take out, this has got the trim selected at the moment. I don't want the trims. You can come back and assign trims again. We're just gonna assign a different switch here so we can see those inputs move. Anyway, so there we go. That's the inputs all configured and that's what you need to do for that. And next, we need to go into RF set. Oops, why did that move? RF set. And uh, to do that, I'm gonna need a little bit more than one finger to configure. So let's do this if I can. Hopefully. All right, um, so I'm gonna hit the button on the receiver. You can see the button, or oh, maybe you can't because the focus is on the radio, not on the receiver. All right, so I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna tap RX1. And there we go, I have bound my receiver. You can now see I have a green light on the receiver and uh, the check mark on the radio. Now, we're not quite done yet. The next step quickly here is to go in and go to the telemetry page and then go and look for the channel configuration, channel out type. So look for that entry and make sure it is set to some D or some, some D of 12. If you can select some D of 12, do that. Um, some of the receivers don't have that option, but um, the GR16 does. So that's what I have mine set to and uh, that'll work. So. That's the configure on the configuration on the radio. We are done with that part. Awesome, right? Okay, so how do we make this work? Well, we need to go to that little cable we talked about earlier. The one we talked about earlier, that is the, the normal male to male, just regular three cables going all the way through. And we're gonna connect this to the rudder input on our spirit. Make sure the orange wire is up and make sure that you don't plug it into the elevator pitch aileron entry right on the end because then you will damage your spirit and you don't want to do that, do you? And then the other end, you're going to plug into channel eight. So all of the Graupner receivers um, from, channel, from the eight channel upwards use channel eight as the SUMD port. That is in the documentation somewhere if you want to go and find it. I'm just letting you know right here so you don't have to go and look it up. And so now, in theory, my radio receiver is talking to the Spirit Flybarless controller. And how do we test it? Well, we're going to go back to the app. Just close out the app after you made the SMD change and restart it so you don't have to do what I just did and go through the cycles there. Um, anyway, so we have the app set up and as you can see, 
I am able to move my sticks and I can see them. And you can note that I don't need to make any changes to to my travels because it, it seems to be working properly. Zero is zero, full travel is 100, etc. And that's true for everything, except you'll note that throttle has nothing on it. And why is that? Well, by default, uh, the spurt says, oh, you can connect your, your ESC directly to your receiver and, and use it that way, which is fine. Um, if you have a uh, Graupner ESC, then maybe that is exactly what you want to do. You want to keep it on there and control it from there, etc., etc. If, however, you want to use the governor settings for something like the hobby wing that we have here, uh, note that Graupner won't support that or it doesn't support it yet as far as I can tell. Um, but the hobby wing, you can plug in your RPM sensor into your your Spurt and it will do governor settings for you. So in order to do that, you need to tell the Spurt, yes, I want to do that. And to enable that, I'm going to go into layout and then under throttle, we'll assign channel one because that is my throttle channel on my radio. As you can see, if I move my throttle, there we go. We now have that assigned. And while I'm here, I'm also going to assign channel seven to bank here just so we can test that as well. Remember I assigned two ch switches to to that and you can see my bank selection is working. We'll leave that at bank zero. And the gyro setting is also working. So I got head and lock there. All right, so all those inputs are great. They're working fantastically. I am not going to go through the full configuration here. Um, I'm waiting on firmware 3.0 before I'm going to do a full setup of a heli going through the whole spurt settings app. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video. So right now I'm just going to go and skip through all of these menus till I get to the end and make sure that I save my settings. And there we go. So now we have saved the settings into there. Uh, this time I'm actually going to close the app to make sure I don't mess it up. All right, now we've done that. The next thing is to actually connect our hobby wing to the spurt because we just set it up, right? And so we can go ahead and plug it into, you can see I have my hobby wing controller here and that goes into the auxiliary port. Make sure you get it the right way around. So white is up in this case and that plugs into the rudder. Now you're looking and you see I got this other little itty bitty wire here that has this one low, low knee connector in it. And you'll notice that that is actually right connected in the middle. So uh, that focus is not gonna work, is it? So uh, that's where you need to have it for your hobby wing. It needs to be connected right in the middle of that connector. The outside pins are not connected. And we're gonna then take that and shove it into the aileron elevator pitch and aileron connector right in the end here. There we go. So, oh, maybe you didn't see that. Let's try that out a little bit. So I just shoved it into that connector right there. So that's connected to the middle pin of that. So now my hobby wing is connected both to um, aux one and to this connector on this side. And I should be able to run a motor if I connect it now. I'm actually going to disconnect that power there and I'm going to hook up a power supply to my ESC. So now you can see I'm actually getting my power through the ESC powering up my both my receiver and my spirit. All right, so that gets, gets us all of that done. The part that's missing currently is how do we get the integration to work on the radio? Well, you remember that cable we talked about a little earlier that has the brown and red wire only and no, no orange wire. All right, so we're going to take this wire. We're going to disconnect the USB cable that we've used before to talk to the laptop. That goes away now. And we're going to take the wire that has the two that's just the red and the, the brown and the red, the red in the middle and connect to the assist port. Make sure the brown is down towards the bottom. There's nothing in the top. 
All right, and then we're going to take the other part of this cable and connect it to our telemetry port on our receiver. And that goes in with brown on negative and red on T, if I can get that connected. All right, so there we go. Now we have two wires going from, from the spur to our receiver, and the one does our radio control, and the other one will do our integration and telemetry. All right, so now that that is connected, okay, now that we've recycled power to the unit, I'm gonna go to telemetry, and if I hit the receiver, you'll see that I now have a new option in here that says general. If I tap general, you don't see anything new, and you go, what the heck? Well, that's because you gotta go through all the other receiver menus first, and then, come on. Oh, make sure that you select general, right? It's gotta say general there in the bottom. So once I've tapped the general, I can then go and there's a couple of taps to the right and there we go. I now have spirit. Yes, I like that, that sounds good, I have spirit. And I can go and do the setup for my servos. Note that I didn't use the enter button, I used the, the right arrow on there. And that took me into that menu and to go back out is the left menu. So there we go, integration is set up. I can now do settings directly from my radio for the spirit. Awesome. Now, something that you might wanna do as well is set up some telemetry on your main page. And that's easy, we're just gonna make some space here. I'll click on a spot there, and you're gonna go to general. Right? In the general menu, you can go and select voltages, whatever, I'm interested in RPM, so we're gonna connect RPM. Yep, I'm just gonna use two. And there we go, general RPM. Now, I, I don't have my motor connected yet, but you can actually see there is some some feedback and there's no setup or anything yet, so you're not gonna actually gonna get anything when you move that, but there you go. It, telemetry is set up, integration is set up. We are communicating fantastic. Everything is working as expected. So now what's left is to take this gear, put it on the helicopter, hook up your servos, and then go through the full calibration. Yes, and I will do that as soon as firmware 3.0 comes out. So thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. Please comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time.